the expectation of a probability distribution. Now we're interested at this stage in looking at discrete random variables. We'll, we'll look at continuous random variables later. So for a discrete random variable, the expected value would be the sum of x times the probability of x. And as we said uh, before, probability of x has to be greater than or equal to zero. Now it will turn out that it's exactly the same as the mean. And the mean you might remember from statistics is a measure of central tendency. So some rules that allow us to play around with expected values. Well, if a and b are a constant and we have the expectation of, well, I guess you could call it a linear function, so ax plus b, then I could factorize out the constant and I get a times expectation of x plus the expectation of b, well, b is a constant, so the expectation of b would be b. Yeah, okay, I'm going to prove it using our formula up there. So expectation of ax plus b would be the sum of ax plus b times the probability of x. If I break that up into two sums, I've got the sum of ax times probability of x plus b times the probability of x. I can factorise out those constants, and you'll see we end up with uh, a times the sum of x, px, well that's what we said the expected value of x was, plus b times the sum of the probability of x, well the sum of all the probabilities is 1. So we get a e x plus b. Okay, uh, so the next uh, law is we can split them up. If we have expectation of two particular things, I can find the expectation of each individual bit and add them together. All right, let's have a look at an example. So we've got a marketing survey, 25 families, they're polled, and we're going to find the number of litres of milk they consume in a week. Now, based on this data, well, how many would you expect a similar family to consume in a week? So we'll draw up our table. So I have a column, well, I'll be using rows rather than columns. So I have a row for the probability of x, and then I'll need a row for x times px, because we're going to sum those up. And I've added a column at the end for the sum. So all the probabilities, of course, sum to be 1. And xpx sums to be 2.2. So our expected value is the sum of all those, 2.2. Of course, if I wanted to, I could go, well, I know the expected value is the average of all the results. Uh, so I can say, well, I've got uh, 0 times 2 plus 1 times 5. Uh, 9 we got twice, 3 we got five times and so on, divided by 25, and sure enough, we get 2.2 again. But that's a rather long way of doing it. So from all that, we'd expect our family to consume 2.2 litres of milk every week. Now note, random variables have an expected value. Now whilst I said it's the same as the mean, technically sample spaces have a mean, whereas random variables have an expected value. All right, well, let's have a go at 13b. 